Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. If you watching are a cast member on this show or any other shows, any of, of the other shows I watch, do not take what I'm saying as some uh, assessment of your personality because I'm only responding to an edit. You really need to get help from someone in person. Let's watch. I know Mary hates it when I come out here. I'm the only foreigner here and everyone sees it. They're like, oh, where's Mary? Why is he walking alone? Everyone's gossiping and rumors spread. Like, oh, maybe he's going to meet somebody or... Okay, so he's going to finish this sentence, but he says, I know that Mary hates it. So is this a passive aggression? Is this a pattern of his? Did he learn that when he was younger? Meaning that he's hurt. He transforms that hurt into anger. He doesn't feel safe to express the anger or the hurt, so he will express it in a hidden or passive way by going to this park and causing her, Mary, to have a lot of upsetness. Maybe they had a falling out, who knows? But I don't, I don't do it to punish Mary, I do it to get away for my sake, for me to calm down. Hey, bug my it could also be a bid for her to chase him that he might, I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if she, if he secretly wants her to show that she cares enough to actually chase him to the park. But I don't know, the way he said that, it seemed a little suspicious. And it could be, a, it's likely that he's answering from his conscious mind. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was some unconscious motivation there of, of trying to communicate something to her by trying to hurt her in some way because he doesn't have to go to that park. He, If he needed to clear his mind, he could just walk half block down the street and sit in a chair or something. I don't know, but I'm guessing something's going on there. Okay, we're hearing from grandma that he often will leave during conflict, and he, he could have learned this from his mom. I don't know, maybe his dad, too. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, people who suffer from addiction, like his mom, often will have that pattern where they, especially if they live with family, because they can't, they need substances to cope, and whenever they're stressed, and often they're, they're stressing because of conflict around substances, it's just a cycle that goes round and round. And they need the substances and they know eventually that they can't use it when they're home because they'll be discovered or bad things will happen. So they have to get away. And in order to emotionally uh, survive, they will bolt. And then once they're gone, they might even in their head be thinking, well, I'm only going to use for this little bit of time. But they end up using and then they get too intoxicated or they get too attracted to the substances or they have to engage in a lot of things to get money to buy the substances and before long they're gone for like an entire week you know parents who abandon their kids in situations like this they don't typically walk out the door thinking i'm going to be gone for a week they think i'm just going to be gone for an hour and that's that that part of their mind that is trying to convince them to leave because if they really fully reckoned with the fact that they're probably going to be gone for a week they probably wouldn't leave so there has to be a part of their mind that says no we won't be gone for a week we'll just be gone for an hour everything will be fine and then oh okay and then you walk out the door You're shouting you don't care so would it be better if i just go back to america then did i say that did if you, you want did that, you then go. that did you not say that then go, go. Okay, so he's doing what she was doing in an earlier scene, I think months before this, where when he is backed into a corner or he's hurt or he doesn't know where to go, he probably has an emerging feeling of, am I being rejected? Does this person love me? What's happening? I'm losing my foundation. And instead of recognizing that and or saying it, he bids for a positive answer to that by basically threatening to leave or saying, well, I guess you don't want to be with me. She said something similar when he first got to the Philippines. She said something like, well, I don't even know why you're with me or something like that. And, you know, those thoughts are real. They're not lies when people say that, but it's not really what's going on inside of the person, right? So he's doing that. And it's not recommended you say that, especially in the middle of a fight, because your partner probably doesn't have a lot of differentiation or goodwill to answer that in the positive. So he says that, then she says what she says. 
and now I'm guessing he's even more hurt. Go, go back. You think it's better for everyone here if I'm... Maybe. If I'm just not here. Maybe because you can't change your attitude. Okay, so I'm going to take a guess and say that if I were a fly in the wall in the house, I would probably see him as more of a problem than her at this point. It just kind of has that look to it. I don't know that, but... It, it seems that way to me, and I also am guessing that it's because of uh, some ongoing depression that he has, and maybe some sort of attitude around wanting to return to his childhood. He had a, a whole chapter, but we know at least he had one chapter of his life that was denied to him, which was his teen years. And he, uh, when he was 15, his he was taken out of the home. And often these modal moments, these very important moments in our lives, particularly if they're traumatic, will become frequent uh, uh, places that we will revisit, especially when we're stressed out. And so he might be revisiting the 15-year-old traumas and also embodying and thinking like a 15 year old because if, if we were just to rewind the clock let's say he's 15 he gets taken out of the home and he is uh, thrust at his father who is in a different state so he's taken away so that's interesting he has a very similar circumstance where he goes to another area he doesn't know anyone he's completely stripped away from everything that he knows and he might have even even been thinking that his dad would be the savior uh, who knows but he arrives in dad's house and he would say later in an interview on the show that his dad was very demanding and strict and and uncaring or something. And so they had a lot of conflict. So this could be very emulative of that, that he has this promised land in the Philippines. He goes there, uh, doesn't solve all his problems, and he is now uh, helpless. When he was 15, he was a lot more helpless than he is now, although... He's pretty helpless right now, given his circumstance, in terms of not knowing the language or not knowing how to earn money, not having any sort of skills or anything. So anyway, he could be in this moment regressing to that place because he feels so. So if when he was 15 and he goes to his dad's, you could imagine him, especially upon encountering that dad is not the promised land. You could imagine him shutting down like a 15-year-old, playing video games all day, sleeping in, not being responsible, not being communicative, just moping around the house and uh, not uh, contributing to the chores or anything. You could absolutely imagine a 15-year-old doing that, right? Well, given that he was never able to resolve or recover from that and other traumas he's been in his life, that he might r return to that mindset of just like, because, you know, when he's 15 and he's at his dad's and I and I hear about the dad's complaint about about him and I get to know him more, I would I could imagine myself thinking, well, I kind of get it. He's 15. What else is he supposed to do? He's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. So I think it's understandable that he's shutting down. So. Uh, it's different, though, if he's an adult, he's 23, he's going to be a father, he's engaged, he has to pull his own weight, he has to contribute. But he, in his mind and in his soul, he might still be of that age. I think they both have those those regressions that, that they will exhibit. She goes to a much earlier point in her life, I think, and I think he might be regressing to that teenage point. It doesn't make it okay, but it just... I think both of them are good people, as I often will think, and I I see possible reasons for what looks to be jerk face behavior. I did not think that either. I couldn't believe it. When I was 14 years old, my siblings, like they're like five and three years old, and my mom was starting to disappear from the house for long periods at a time. Okay, so I was wondering about the history there. By the way, a lot of things have happened, but it didn't seem very interesting for me to comment on. They're building up to a wedding, and the mom and Mary aren't 
getting along swimmingly, but they're not being uncordial. They are, I think, still resentful about the past, which makes sense, but I imagine things will work out between them, but I don't know. And they also played a prank on the moms, uh, serving her chicken or uh, frog legs and telling her that it's baby chickens. And the family apparently did it to him originally, and he thought it was funny, so they decided to do it to the mom. That always just seems like a production thing because why in the world would you play a prank on your mom when things were so uncomfortable? The mom has arachnophobia. She has a phobia about bugs and lizards and stuff. And she arrives in the Philippines and in the house, there's spiders and lizards and bugs and everything. And there's no way to prevent that from happening. And she was having a phobic reaction, which I felt bad for her. But I was wondering if being there might actually be exposure therapy enough as long as it's not too traumatic to her so that she can actually get over this phobia. It seemed possible, but it, it, it just really points to the privilege difference between the mainstream middle-class American person and people living in the Philippines. I mean, uh, you know, there's not a lot of opportunity in the Philippines to deny bugs and lizards from entering your bedroom, your bathroom, your home because of the infrastructure and the way things are, you know, plus it's hot weather. And so you often have, uh, um, you know, like I remember I was in Florida, like Southern Florida, and none of the windows actually fully cl closed because you didn't need it to or something. I don't know. Whereas in Seattle, um, like, I have this CO2 meter in my office right over there. And if I close up all my windows, um, I'll like suffocate in my office right here because I have a special uh, a door for sound and uh, you know everything's airtight <laughs> and bugs ain't getting in here. Um, even though I live sort of in the woods and there's a fair amount of bugs. Anyway, not as many as those. Anyway, point is, is that that happened and the mom seemed to adjust well enough but now we're hearing some details about his childhood. I was suspecting it was something along these lines. So we're hearing that she would disappear for periods of time. And he was 14 and the other kids were five and three. And then I would be left alone with the kids to take care of them and watch over them. So eventually the DHS comes in. They take me, my brother, and my sister away. And that whole time I was in denial of my mom being a drug addict. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, that wouldn't be unusual, especially if she wasn't being forthcoming, right? And how would you know? And why would you want to think that if you're a kid? You probably just believed her excuses. Oh, I was sick, or oh, I was at the hospital, or I was at grandma's house, or oh, I you know forgot, or my car broke down, or whatever. Tip it, that'd be a typical story. There's a lot of details that are left out because... Of course, just a parent disappearing for a while, DSHS doesn't know that. So there has to be some some alert to the government. And usually that's in the form of, well, it could have been the father. The father was, I don't know how estranged he was, but it, it, that's a common profile that the father will call occasionally and will ask, where's your mom? And, oh, I haven't seen her in a few days. What? You know, and then call CPS, and then that gets the ball rolling. It screwed with me mentally. It really messed up all of our lives. I'm really happy that you started recovery, and you're like 18 months clean now. Uh, oh, and by the way, we heard earlier that she was one year sober, but they're six months later. So he's been in the Philippines for about six months. I'm proud of you for doing that. The thing about it is... Oh, and we heard earlier when he was t you know, recalling that he was in charge of his younger siblings, which is parentification, of course, and also a precursor or a breeding ground for uh, codependency over functioning. Also, not feeling good enough, you know, all the things that we've talked about thus far. You don't just treat addiction by not using. You treat it by creating a life that makes it easier not to. Yes, yeah. So I 
am very encouraged by hearing her say that. I don't know why she's saying it in this moment, but I'm very encouraged by that because that points in the direction of her involved in a robust recovery program. It's not just that she's abstaining. Uh, so to hear her say that, it means that it tells me that she's involved with some sort of recovery program, seemingly. The only thing that would make it more, I guess, complete in a sense is the rebuilding of a relationship with you. Um, in order to reestablish a good relationship with me again, you need to connect and bond with Mary. Okay, interesting. So she's saying a part of her recovery is reestablishing a relationship with him, which I wouldn't say that in recovery. I would say that she's perfectly, uh, you know, it's understandable that she would want to reconnect with him and rebuild their relationship. And it would make sense that that would be seen as part of her recovery. But to uh, make that a requirement on her recovery is not wise because what if they don't reconnect does that mean that she is supposed to use again or relapse or something so a lot of recovery has to do with understanding what you have control over you know the mantra in aa is uh, i can't remember exactly how it goes but you know it's something along the lines of understanding the things you have control over and the things you don't and the problem with that can fuel a lot of addiction is this notion that the person who is suffering from addiction has control over it and over a lot of things in their life when they don't really. So uh, anyway, but he's saying, okay, fine, you want to reconnect with me, but that requires you actually being nice to my fiance, which on one hand sounds like uh, coercion, you know, blackmail. But on the other hand, it makes total sense. He, he plans on marrying her and spending the rest of, her, of his life with her. And he can't be in a relationship with his mom if his mom and his wife are in constant odds with each other. So it does make some practical sense. Let's see what she says. You know, like Mary didn't have her mom. She never had the type of person that would give her guidance and like, you gotta have her back. I understand what you're saying. So I will try to build a healthy relationship with Mary. I really appreciate that. I think what she means by that is I will try to establish a back and forth with her, but she, Mary, has to comply or something. I'm sure there's some, she, she, she's had some one-on-one -on -one interviews with the producer. She's coming in pretty hot, pretty angry, pretty determined to stop the wedding, essentially, is what she's saying. So I'm wondering where this is headed. Okay, well, let's adjourn there. If you are one of the top tier YouTube members, you can have me say something on your behalf if you want, within reason. So I just wanna give a shout out to the most deserving viewers. Is that, that's what that tier is called. <laughs> we have Fernando, the Clearfield Vlog, 63 Angel, Kimmy Story, Live to Wander, and Dramanster something. So if you are one of those people, thank you so much for being a member and also for being a most deserving viewer. And also if you want to email in through the website, a little blurb, like you wanna promote something or just say something to the audience or to me or to your spouse or, or to them uh, or an opinion, whatever, you know, again, within reason. I. You know, there's certain limits to what I can say, but uh, if you're one of those folks, and if you want me to do something like that, become a, a most deserving viewer and you will be given that opportunity. <laughs> and everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.